Hey, first up, we have Anton nonsense uh, with an client inspect deal command, which everyone who wants to make deals on PowerPoint should be very excited about. <clears throat> Anton, go ahead. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen and talk a little bit about uh, yeah what we've been working on. Um, so yes, basically we have worked on um, inspect deals command, which looks something like this at the moment. So let me explain what this is about. The idea is that uh, we wanted basically to propagate um, more uh, inspect deal. Yeah. We wanted to basically propagate more information about uh, deals and actually record their life cycle uh, in terms of uh, seeing the history of the different stages that a deal went through, uh, as well as the different stages that a data transfer uh, attached to a given deal went through, so that we can understand a little bit better uh, at what stages, for example, there are problems with a deal, because as all of you know, uh, deals are somewhat flaky at the moment and a lot of the times they fail. We basically wanted to uh, get a bit more understanding of where they fail and why they fail and yeah, basically record all the relevant information. So at the moment on the screen, you can see a deal that I created on a DevNet on my machine a few minutes ago. And I did it like uh, a few minutes ago because it takes like uh, six, seven minutes for the whole deal to complete. Um, so we can see that this deal has an ID of 10 uh, and this proposal CID. So the new uh, command line tool that we introduced is basically Lotus client inspect deal. And you can query deals based on proposal CID and deal ID. The reason that uh, you can query them by both is because deal ID is zero before the deal ends on chain. And you might be interested to know what happened with the deal if for some reason something fails uh, within the stages before the deal actually hits uh, the chain, which happens around uh, this uh, stage here, basically at stage check for acceptance, the provider submits the deal on chain and we wait for uh, a confirmation. And at this stage, we basically have a deal ID. Um, right, so here we can now see all the different stages that a deal went through, basically the client reserving funds, uh, opening of the data transfer uh, to the storage provider, the different stages within the data transfer, checking that the provider actually accepts the deal and publishes it on chain, uh, awaiting for a pre-commit message, sealing, and the last one where we see that the deal was activated. And this whole thing took like four or five minutes because this is a DevNet with the 2K sectors. Um, right, so let me quickly create a new deal just for, uh, for illustration purposes. Um, I'm going to create, um, let's say, a deal with some other uh, data on it. Um, I've already uh, created the wallet. So if we say uh, Lotus wallet list, yeah, we see that I have a default wallet with some few in it. Um, and I'm gonna create a DOC data CID, basically importing the data um, and creating um, importing the data into Lotus, and then creating the proposal CID. Um, right, and this should I've called it DOC CID in my notes, but this is actually a proposal CID. That's how it is known into Lotus. So at the moment we have this proposal CID, and if I do list deals, list deals. We see that at the moment this is deal with ID zero and it's in the funding stage. And now if I actually want to inspect it, I have to call inspect deal proposal CID with this CID. And we see that it's actually already at the stage where we're checking for due acceptance, waiting for the provider to publish the deal on chain. And due to the defaults of Lotus, at the moment, uh, there is a delay. I mean, providers do not immediately like publish deals. So the deal should be pending uh, for publishing. I think there is like a one hour yeah, publish period. We are waiting for more deals to come because this is a very small deal and miners want to collect a bunch of deals together before they actually publish them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and publish this one specifically, which triggered the publishing and 
um, we can see that uh, the provider has now published the on chain and we're waiting for confirmation and we're going to get into the further stages as yeah, time passes. So the idea is that we are going to collect uh, all relevant error messages and we're going to see how long deals stay in various stages and basically provide a bit more information about the life cycle of a deal for users. Um, this is still not complete. Ideally, we should have uh, even more data like uh, we should be able to see that there are more stages upcoming at the moment. This is not visible on my screen. We only see the past stages, so we don't really communicate the future stages to the user. And it'd be nice if a user knows, oh, my deal has to also pass through a couple of more stages before it becomes active on chain. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much where we're at at the moment. Um, we continue to test this with various like, um, error scenarios with uh, real miners just to confirm that we're getting like meaningful error messages back. Uh, for example, if uh, we fail on the deal transfer stage, I can't really demo right now an error case, but earlier today, uh, due to various configs, we hit one of those error cases where basically one of the sites timed out and we do propagate error messages. So hopefully this tool will help us um, fix bugs related to data transfers, to uh, deals in general, and yeah, make uh, deal making a bit more robust in Lotus. So that's pretty much all I have for you for today. Um, yeah, this deal is already at the pre-commit stage. I mean, now it's gonna take like two or three minutes for it to be sealed. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? Are you already testing this with any miners? Um, you mentioned doing some live testing. Are you working with like the MinerX cohort? Um, I actually have a miner uh, here in my local network. So I'm first gonna try that uh, and introduce some failures with it. Um, and I haven't thought about actually testing it with other miners considering that I have, have yeah, a local miner that I can queue and restart uh, by myself, but we could totally test it with other folks as well, yeah. Yeah, I bet you'd, you'd get some probably some decent feedback from folks who are in the slingshot competition about like, I'd actually love it if you told me X, um, which maybe we don't anticipate. Definitely, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, make sure that I reach out to those folks and uh, let them know that this thing exists and uh, communicate that they can now use it in case they see that their deals are failing so that we have a bit more feedback. Yeah, thanks for that tip. Another another thing worth mentioning here is that the this is backed by uh, changes in the JSON RPC API as well. So uh, what we plan is uh, for the deal bot that um, that a bunch of us are uh, uh, AC and and Mike Gelser are working on. Uh, we plan to capture the deal stages and the timeline of the deal in the data point so that uh, for deals that went wrong, we, we have the entire trace to go back and analyze and debug what went wrong. Is this yeah, also we're, adding, we're really excited. Yeah. is this also changing the messages that you get when things fail? Like you also go through and change some of those things or add, add more granularity there? Like why a transfer might've been canceled or things like that? Well, Dirk went through the Go data transfer recently and he fixed a couple of bugs and I've seen that we propagate more error messages. Um, so we're at the stage where now we're going to start seeing those and hopefully they make more sense than the information that we've currently had. So yeah, we do propagate now a bit more error messages within those stages. Cool. Any other questions? Nice. Yeah. Uh, yep. Just one last note. This should end up on Lotus hopefully next week, and then anyone will be able to use it, and we keep on iteratively improving it. Nice. That's all. Thank you.